All right, I want to take a few minutes and talk about banjo setup. I'm sure if you want to learn Don Reno style, you want your banjo to sound as close to his as possible. Um, but it's impossible to sound like anybody else but yourself. Um, no one will ever sound exactly like Don Reno because Don Reno is what made his banjo sound like Don Reno. So uh, it's it's 90% the player and 10% the banjo. But we could get a little, we can get close by setting up your banjo right and having a good banjo. That helps. Um, so I'll show you some setup things about Don's banjo that uh, helped him get the sound that he got. For one thing, Don always used light gauge strings. And he also didn't play as hard as a lot of banjo players do. So he very rarely broke strings. But he used light gauge strings um, with a very close action. Mine is actually set up a little higher than he probably had his. Um, but he had a very close action. And two of the most important things about banjo setup is the tightness of the head and your bridge. Now, Don kept his banjo head at about a B-flat, according to him, that's what he said. He kept it at a B-flat, and what I mean by that is uh, tap tuning the head. You can tap on it, and it actually makes a, a note. And um, he says that he kept it around a B-flat, which is considered extremely tight as compared to uh, the latest trends of today, where it's B-flat, or uh, not B-flat, but G-flat or G-sharp. Uh, some people even tune it to A, but Don says he kept his at B-flat or B. Now, I'll say that not all banjos need to be that tight. Every banjo differs, so uh, I'm just giving you a rough guideline to um, how Don did his. Um, the second most important thing is the bridge. Now, Don's bridges are really important, and um, I'll show you what he did on his. Now, Don would have a bridge. When you get a bridge, it's usually uh, too thick. So what you want to do is you want to thin uh, down your bridge this way and get a piece of sandpaper and uh, sand it down to its thin. My bridges are, are usually about, it's a little over an eighth of an inch uh, wide uh, from one side to the other on the bottom and it tapers up thinner at the top. Now this is what Don did to his, and actually in Don's five-string instruction book, he actually talks about thinning the bridge. Um, he says that a thick bridge will kill the tone of a banjo and kill the sound, and I, I agree with him. But you can get too thin with a bridge, so um, it's real important to go a little bit at a time and sand and try it out, put it on your banjo, try it out, um, and just keep switching it and putting it back on until you get it just right. And uh, again, bridges, um, you could go through a hundred bridges before you find the right one. I've got a, a pile of them. Um, and, I, you know, sometimes I could go through 20 bridges before I find one that's just right. Even though it may be the same brand, um, the bridge wood itself may be different from one bridge to the other. So uh, get you some bridges and try them out. And some take a little less thinning, some take more. But uh, the important thing is don't go too far with it because then you'll make it flimsy uh, and then it'll you know, wobble or bend or break. Um, another important thing Don did with his bridges is that he took some meat from under or wood from under the ebony top. So he thinned down under the ebony um, to get a desired tone that he wanted and it does uh, change the tone. Um, this is the same things I do to my bridge to get mine where I want it. And, you know, the bridge is very, very important to getting Don sound. So experiment with them. Uh, Don actually used a uh, bridge that had bone inserts in the, where the strings rest. He used that one for years, um, but I think he later went back to a regular maple and ebony bridge. But thinning it and taking out some under there, under the ebony. So I've got very little under this particular bridge under the ebony there so do those two things through the bridges like i said do a little bit at a time um, or you'll ruin the bridge if you go too far all right um, another thing i want to tell you about is uh, the thumb picks don used a clear plastic thumb pick um, for a lot of his career for most of his career i guess 
made by Dobro. And the one that I use is actually made by Dobro. It's a, a 70s thumb pick, uh, but you don't have to have a you know an actual Dobro thumb pick. Uh, Dunlop makes one that's almost very. It's almost the same thing. It's a clear plastic thumb pick. Um, and the thing I've noticed is different thumb picks have different. Uh, actually, affect your tone a lot. So, um, you know, try try out a bunch of thumb picks till you get one that makes the sound that you want that you like. Um, this particular plastic, I don't know what it is about them, about the original Dobro, original Dobro thumb picks, and these Dunlop. The plastic sounds different. I don't know what it is, and I, and I like them uh, too. I know Don must have figured that out a long time ago that he liked that sound. So, get you some of these clear plastic Dobro thumb picks. Try them out. See if you like them, or clear plastic Dunlops. Now, here's a little secret that most people don't know about Don's thumb picks. Um, what Don would do was he would take uh, their thumb pick and he would thin down the blade that's sticking up there. The the actual part of the pick that strikes the strings and what he would do, the best way I found to to sand them down, and this is what Don does, he's, he sanded down the back side not the side that strikes the picks, or strikes the strings, I'm sorry but it's the side that your thumb is on because you don't want to sand the back side that strikes the, the uh, strings because it'll be rough sounding and you'll have to play it forever to get that sound out of there to wear it out but what you want to do is you take a nail file, just a regular old nail file, and lay it on that blade and sand it down till you get it thinner. Um, most thumb picks uh, don't have a good Reno sound because they're thick sounding. They're real thick, and um, when you thin down the blade of your thumb pick, it adds a certain sound when you do your uh, brush style stuff, you know, things like that. So. Thin down that thumb pick. Again, it's just like the bridges. Don't go too far with it uh, because you don't want to get it too thin. Then it'll lose power and it will sound, you know, it'll sound too tinny sounding. So uh, be sure to, to experiment with that. Some thumb picks, just like the bridges, don't need as much. So uh, actually some thumb picks that I have used didn't need any thinning at all. It was just thin already. So uh, try that out. Um... And those are really the most uh, important things to Don's setup is the head tightness, his bridge, and his thumb picks. Now, um, Don also used stainless steel finger picks um, for a good part of his career uh, from the 60s on up to his death. Um, and I've, Sammy Sheeler is actually making uh, stainless steel finger picks now. And I try to pair out. I don't really like them, uh, so it'll be up to you. I mean, get a pair and try them out if you like them. Um, great. Now, I mean, they're the stainless steel picks are real slick. Um, they make very little pick noise, um, and they're real. They're just real fast feeling. But I, to me, they sounded a little uh, tinny or thin sounding when you play. Um, like I said, just as a thumb pick, your thumb pick plays a big part in the tone of your banjo, and so does your finger picks. So what I use is Kaiser old style finger picks. They're just like old national thumb picks or finger picks. Um, it's just a certain type of metal that are, that are used in here, and they have the best tone, I think, a more solid, uh, full sounding tone, especially high up on the neck. Um, that's where I found that the stainless steel ones uh, just kind of lost it a little bit on the up high on the neck. But the stainless steel picks work for Don, and they sounded good on his. So uh, get a pair and try them out and see what you think. Um, one last thing I'll mention is your um, tailpiece. Now, uh, you want to keep enough pressure down on the back of your bridge to keep your bridge from shifting around or moving. Um, you know, Don kept a pretty good amount of pressure on his on his strings um, for the certain tone that he wanted. Now, tailpieces vary from maker to maker, so, um, you know, get a tailpiece that you like and try it out or try one or more out and see how the sound differs and you know get one that's easy to adjust up and down so you can figure out how much pressure you want to put on the back of the bridge but you don't want to put too much you know especially where it's you know hitting the head you don't want to do that that's too much but uh, make it tight enough so that your bridge doesn't shift around or move around on you and this one here is actually a um, a type of tailpiece that Don 
had on his for a long time, and it's a, a Paramount uh, tailpiece that has a little piece on top that you can adjust the tension um, on the back of the bridge. And, um, you know, this is a really, really easy one to adjust. Uh, a lot of them have a knob in the back that you can adjust the tension on, but um, that one works real good, but they're hard to find. But other bridges work just as well. I had a price tailpiece on here that I really like. So uh, just experiment with those those different tailpieces or, or the pressure on your tailpiece. And like I said, all of these little adjustments like your bridges, your uh, head tightness, and your tailpiece um, really vary from banjo to banjo. But try them out. Mess with it. Uh, it may take you a month to get it like you want it. Now, it has me two or three times. So um, experiment with these things. Experiment with the picks. You know, thin the pick. Uh, try those stainless steel picks out, see what you, you like, and um, it worked for Don, so uh, maybe it'll work for you.